Where to go today? Day Tripper. Can I call you Trip? Great. Hey, why don't you come over and see us in Dallas? I know this awesome Thai fusion barbecue sushi hotspot. It's amazing. I'll make us a reservation. Oh, never mind. Got to take this. Hello? No, no, yes. no, compadre. You need to come on back to Fort Worth. Cowboys culture. We'll have a bowl of a time. No, listen, man. Dallas. Dallas. Bright likes big city. It's amazing. You're going to yeah. listen to this no. guy? The only okay. bulls he's ever ridden are on Wall Street. Stupid Them cowboy trying to get him to come to Fort Worth. Worth. I'll let you ride my long haul. Dallas. 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 Fort Dallas. Worth. Yeah, I'm trying to get Fort the big Worth. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. I got a different idea. How about we just split the difference? Arlington! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. If you were to drop a pin in the middle of the Metroplex, chances are you'd hit Arlington. Just 18 miles from both Dallas to the east and Fort Worth to the Wild West. Some may dismiss Arlington as just another DFW suburb, but if you peel back the concrete curtain and spend some time away from the overpasses, you'll find a town with its own unique identity and history. Today, Arlington's known for its big time entertainment, but that legacy goes way back, all the way to the 20s in a place called Arlington Downs, a 6,000 seat horse track and grandstand. It was the bee's knees back in those days and DFW's spot to bet on the races. But now all that's left is the old horse watering trough. Racehorses used to come up to it and get a drink. Arlington Downs is no more, but back in those days, this city had more than one hot spot. And the other place to indulge your vices was Arlington Baptist College. I know it doesn't exactly sound like a place to party, but things aren't always what they seem. Today it's a private Baptist college, but if you'd been here in the 30s and 40s, your experience would have been a lot less Christian and a lot more whiskey, women, and gambling. You see, this right here used to be known as Toppa Hill Terrace, Arlington's wildest and most secret speakeasy. Decades before the chapel, this institute of religious education was the home and private, uh, business we'll say, of Fred and Marsha Browning. Bugsy Siegel, Bonnie and Clyde, even Howard Hughes, they were all guests here at Toppa Hill Terrace. And the covert operation run here was near foolproof. Below the home was the casino, where guests would enjoy a game or two. But if trouble came a knocking at the front gates, the alarm would sound and everything changed. The long drive gave guests just enough time to run out the secret passages and into the tea garden, where they would pull out their cups and pretend like it was nothing but a good old fashioned garden soiree. The police, finding nothing wrong, would be forced to leave. After all, drinking tea is no crime. And when the coast was clear, the festivities would pick back up without skipping a beat. And if there was another alarm, well, there was another tea party. This little setup worked quite well for many years. That is until it didn't. Folks wised up to its schemes and a certain Baptist preacher named J. Frank Norris took it upon himself to shut Top of Hill down, turning it from a den of sin to an upstanding institution. Today, it's open for tours where guests with an imagination can step back in time. All right, so visitors would have to navigate a series of doors and passwords, but once they made it through into the heart of the building, they would be invited back into the casino. Today, all that's left of the casino are the original walls, which of course now make up the kitchen, but the original escape routes are this way. Okay, so here it is, a tunnel back to the outside. So if the cops were on their way, all the people ran out of the casino, down the tunnel. Meanwhile, all the roulette tables and the card tables disappeared into the walls. Man, you gotta give it to them. Criminals can be pretty crafty. Indeed they can. 
The college is constantly turning up new passages and old relics from the speakeasy days. It's a dark past that this college fully embraces. So with the speakeasies of the 30s and 40s gone, the 1960s brought a much more wholesome form of entertainment to town. The original Six Flags Over Texas, with a different themed area for each flag, making it America's first true theme park. But it seems they missed one. What's about the Irish flag? Okay, so the Irish flag has never flown over Texas, but it does fly over Jay Gilligan's. So let's travel to the Emerald Isle, shall we? Right in the heart of Arlington. Yes, come along, lads and lassies, for a taste of the motherland, and to feast upon Irish classics like hamburgers and Irish cheesesteaks and Irish nachos, huh? Okay, so this isn't exactly a traditional Irish pub, but a Texas variation started by Mr. Randy Ford back in 1979. I went to UTA and graduated from UTA. So when I was going to school, I had always kind of wanted to open up a little bar and grill, a little uh -huh. restaurant. And my roommate in college, his name was John Gilligan. I thought, what a segue into having a little <laughs> Texas grill with a little luck of the Irish I like in there. It. <laughs> so what kind of clientele come in here? We have a very eclectic clientele. Yeah. We, have, we have the college students, we have the city people, we have the college professors, there's downtown lawyers. So this is a good local neighborhood bar and grill. How much of Ireland is here at this Texas pub? Well, the first thing we do is Irish nachos. That's our signature dish. Yeah. And instead of doing tostados, we do potatoes. <laughs> now, Ireland potatoes, so you know Gilligan's nachos. So yeah, I love it. A little bit of Ireland, a little bit of Texas, right exactly. there. Yeah, huh? we got the Guinness beer, and we got the Lone Star <laughs> beer. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew the Lone Star State and the Emerald Isle would meld so well together, especially on one delicious, potatoey, cheesy platter? All right, man. So you're having the Irish nachos. That's what you have at Jay Gilligan's. I love it. It's got all your major food groups here. It's got your <laughs> potatoes, your calcium here, and your cheese. So what brings you into Jay Gilligan's today? We're starving. Starving? <laughs> That's a good reason to come here. That's Irish nachos, I'll be honest with you. Is that what you get every time? Yes, yes. I'm pregnant and I'm craving them. <laughs> Jay Gilligan's is a staple in Arlington. It, he is truly Arlington. Well, it's got a lot of character. So, you know. The house built on Irish nachos. The, the the house. That's true, that's true. <laughs> and if you think this house is packed now, you should see it on St. Patrick's Day. But it's now time to make my own trip to a Texas Irish paradise. Look at this, a big old skillet of the nachos of the Emerald Isle. You got potatoes covered in cheese, onions, tomatoes, peppers, and of course you can make this an appetizer, but I want to make it my full meal, so I got some grilled chicken on the side. <laughs> Truthfully, I can't even see a single potato underneath these toppings. Oh. It's good. It's a little bit nachos, a little bit potato skins, a little bit cheese fries, but it's all Irish nachos. <laughs> Hot, but good. You know, I don't think St. Patrick himself ever ate something as delicious as Irish nachos. I mean, whoever knew Texas and Ireland were meant to be together. And as I stuff my face, the only better combination coming to mind would have to be Texas and football. This is the home of the Dallas Cowboys. And since football season's so short, it can be tough to get in on game day. Luckily, the stadium itself knows no off season. Let's go. Hut, 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 hut. Pretty much any day without an event here, the stadium is open for tours. And whether you're a football fan or not, this modern day Coliseum is a sight to behold. It's huge, even by Texas size standards. The largest dome roof in the world, largest indoor display in the world, 10 separate levels, 1,600 toilets, the Statue of Liberty could stand on the field and not touch the roof. Craziness! And the guided tour is packed, with people like myself looking for every nerdy detail. Guides take visitors to places I could never get into on my own, from the press box to luxury suites. Now I could get used to this. And then into the private halls of America's team and America's sweethearts. I'm sneaking into the cheerleaders locker room. Not really, because it's on the tour. You think these would fit me? I think so. And this crop top? Wait, no, 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 here we go. No, these are definitely my size. And of course, there's another very important locker room on the tour. <gasps> the Holy of Holies. The Dallas Cowboys locker room. Oh, man. 
And all the players for America's team get ready for game day right here in this room. And then here are all the players I grew up watching. Michael Irvin, Jay Novacek, Troy Aikman, and then the great Emmett Smith. Their gear over there, and then check it out. Here's Miles Austin, wide receiver, tight end, Jason Witten, quarterback Tony Romo. Man, it's always been my dream to be quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. And here, that dream comes true. Yeah! Yes! Come on, we're gonna hit somebody. Come on! Well, not really. But this is as close as normal trippers like me can get to the real thing. For a Dallas Cowboys fan, it doesn't get much better than this. I'm on the field. Can you imagine playing here in front of 100,000 screaming fans? Either cheering your name or booing your name, whatever the case may be. The sound of that. And I mean, look up. With these four screens, there's more jumbotronage hanging from this ceiling than anywhere else in the world. It's massive. I mean, this whole stadium is just massive. Since it's self-guided, visitors can stay on the field as long as they want, meaning it's time to play some pigskin. Beneath the air-conditioned sky of glass and steel and the turf of squishy green, two titans of tripping met to settle a score as old as time itself. One a veteran barbecue eater, the other, well, exactly the same. We've got a doozy for you here today, folks. Garner is at the line of scrimmage and hut! Garner looks. Garner fakes the Statue of Liberty. Looks like he's going for the hook and ladder razzle-dazzle, but the pressure's on by Garner. He's taking it himself. No, he's not. He's throwing down field. A catch on the wings of a dove. A valiant last stand. And then victory. 60, 70, a 99-yard touchdown pass to Garner. Touchdown, Cowboys win. Oh, my goodness. Give him the MVP trophy, folks. We've just seen history. Ooh, I guess I need to work on my touchdown dance a little bit. I could truly stay here all day, but Arlington beckons us onward. Now, most don't know just what a sports town this is, and not just for football and baseball. Pro baseball has Cooperstown, New York. Pro football has Canton, Ohio. Pro bowling has Arlington, home of the International Bowling Museum and Hall of Fame. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Yep, the Hall of Fame for bowling is right here in Arlington. Like the Hall of Fame. All right, we are standing in the presence of champions. You may not know a lot of these names, but they are huge in bowling. Carolyn Doran Ballard, one of the fiercest competitors to ever play the sport. And then over here, Walter Ray Williams Jr. This man has 47 national titles. That's more than any other pro bowler. And then of course, Earl Anthony, arguably the greatest bowler to ever play the sport and the first man to win a million dollars in his career. This dude was a stud. And not just for his awesome glasses. Everyone here has left a lasting mark on the sport. The truth is, I had to look up most of their names, but their resumes are incredible. And whether or not you're a bowling pro or just a curious novice like me, there's no better place to learn about this sport than here on the museum side. From ancient Egypt to stately Europe, bowling was the game of princes and paupers alike. These, uh, these kind of look like medieval torture devices, but they're actually bowling balls and pins. At least I think. That kind of looks like a wooden frisbee. And finally, bowling came to America. Now this was all long before the days of automated bowling and digital scoring. You actually had to have pin boys at the end of the lane to set everything back up after you bowled the ball. It's like a lot of work. But even as technology changed, bowling kept up with the times. Those wooden balls of the past gave way to modern orbs of pin-crushing power. Turns out a bowling ball is not a bowling ball is not a bowling ball. You use different balls to have different moves on the lane or different spin motions. I always just went to the bowling lane. I picked up whatever I found and I used it the whole time. Turns out I was doing it a little bit wrong. Yeah, I think I've been doing lots wrong when it comes to bowling. Luckily, right next door is the place to fix that. The International Bowling Training and Research Center, the premier bowling destination in Texas. And who better to improve my game than Team USA coach Brian O'Keefe. 
We're the home of Men's Team USA, Women's Team USA, and Junior Team USA. But we're also open to the public, meaning that anybody can come and take a lesson with us here in the facility. We have lots of cameras up and around the facility that are taping at all times that we can throw back into our computer matrix. Oh, wow. Now, with you being a beginner, we're probably not going to go that far with you today. But <laughs> yeah. we can start off just having you throw a few shots, and we can see what's, what we got going on. OK, I might have a lot of problems, so uh, this could take a while. But let's, let's just do it. Hey, we can, can do it. Tell anything, me what right? I'm doing wrong. That's right. Nine. Not too bad. Not too there. bad. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I got one. Let's pin try left one to again. It's right in the middle. It should be easy, right? <laughs> oh, come on. Hang on. Oh, oh no. That's all right. That was it, pretty good. It is centimeters, but millimeters. What we see most times is that people use too much muscle, too much upper body muscle to really use, you know, to bowl effectively. Okay. You know, if you think of any sport where we want to generate power, we want to do it with our lower body. Okay, this is a mind flip for me. Exactly. I'm used exactly. to just th chunk it as hard as you can, sure. muscle through it. We don't have to try and throw it 100 miles per hour down there with our upper body. Nice and loose. I know you're a big, strong guy, but <laughs> just let it be loose. <laughs> oh, I'm very strong. I'm just trying to demonstrate that for everybody. <laughs> oh! All right, not too bad. Now it's time to implement the hook. Just as our hand starts to come out of the ball, we just want to create a small little handshake. It's technically better form, but in reality, fewer pins. You can't see it, but each lane actually has a different oil pattern. Now that's the advanced stuff. I'm just trying to knock down pins. More, more spinach. Gonna need to eat more spinach if I want to keep up with Brian. Oh, come on. <laughs> I gotta, gotta give me some of that. <laughs> That's awesome, man. But I guess I am learning something. No! Oh, hey, look at that. All right. Progress. Now, sports in the AC can be great, but sometimes a day tripper's just gotta sweat it out. And that, my friends, is why I'm headed to River Legacy Park. So, despite being smack in the middle of DFW, Arlington has managed to preserve 1,300 acres from the impending sprawl, making an excellent place to relax, hike, or you know how I roll, bike. All right, so here's the entrance to the mountain bike trails. And there's about 10 miles of them, but I'm gonna do a three mile loop, meaning I should be done in about three minutes. Don't wait up for me. Well, that's optimistic, but you gotta have goals. Now I must say, this oak forest is a very nice changeup from my usual hill country rocks. And I love it that Arlington has preserved a park like this for all of us to enjoy. I just wish I'd brought a trail map too. Two trails diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both. But being a traveler long I stood. And something something into the something. And that means I'll pick this one. EKG trail, expert only? What the heck? Yeah, I'm clearly not making the best decisions either. Whoa, 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 oh yeah. I'm not sure if it's named EKG because it's got the ups and downs of a heart monitor, but one thing's for sure, my heart is racing. Woo, I guess as long as I stay in the saddle, I'm all right. But what's this, concrete and a river? So that's the Trinity River down there. It's pretty cool to think that you can find this much nature right between two of the biggest cities in Texas. It's really peaceful out here. It's quiet. Oh, I love it like that there are these little pockets protected from everything else. All the noise of the city sort of drifts away when you're out here. In fact, the only noise I hear right now is the rumbling of my stomach. Oh, oh that was fun. How long it take? Okay, a little over three minutes. I am back in one piece, so let the day trip continue. We still got a lot more to see in Arlington. And as it turns out, we've got a lot more to eat. So we're headed now to Mariano's Mexican restaurant. Now there are lots of Tex-Mex joints in our state, but Mariano stands out from the masses as being the virtual Thomas Edison of Tex-Mex culture. As it was here in 1971 that owner Mariano Mendez invented one of Tex-Mex's most treasured traditions, the frozen margarita machine. For a history lesson, here's his nephew Alexis. Well, my uncle, who's like my dad, he got his father's secret margarita recipe, was ready for success. Unfortunately, opening night, 
didn't go so great. And, and here's an illustration that kind of shows you how he got the idea. You know, a lot of different guests come up to him and complain. Morano went and got onto his bartender. The bartender threatened to quit. Morano has a sleepless night. Trying to think, what am I gonna do? He sees his dream slipping through his fingers. He sees a girl pulling a Slurpee from the Slurpee machine. Uh -huh. Light bulb goes off. Yeah. What could be colder than frozen, right? Yeah. Well, so he went and found a soft serve ice cream machine, started tinkering with it, boom, it freezes, and you have a frozen margarita. <laughs> and that's how the world's first frozen margarita machine was born. Genius. And it became such a success and such a part of, of revolutionizing the Tex-Mex restaurant industry yeah. that it's now in the Smithsonian. And that's why <laughs> all it. we have here is this replica. You can see they made him wear a white glove. They wouldn't even let him touch his own machine. So <laughs> Once it's in the Smithsonian, it's, it, it is a piece, is of a history. piece of history. <laughs> that's how special it is to them. It's special to our family, and it's made a lot of people happy in, all over the world. Happy is one way to put it. And this restaurant has been serving Happy Tex-Mex for over 40 years, as Mariano's turns out all the classics. Because of course, you gotta have some food for the frozen margarita to wash down, right? Speaking of, I need my own little glass of history. Okay, so if you can't decide what you wanna eat at Mariano's, why not just go for the whole enchilada? <laughs> Served in what qualifies as a small ship. Look at this. So we've got a cheese enchilada, a chicken enchilada, a beef enchilada, and one second. I think I'm, I'm gonna need the key here. <laughs> if you wanted to sample Mariano's entire menu in one meal, this is the way to do it. Enchilada time. It's not just a cheese inside of the enchilada, it's covered in queso as well. All right, good. Oh, it's great. Classic family recipes. Yes, sir. With a plate like this, you need a plan of attack. I mean, I could finish this one off, but then there's a very good chance I wouldn't have any room left for the one down here. So you gotta take little bites of all of it, come back in for the best ones. I'm gonna have to order this every time at Mariano's because there's no way I'm gonna be able to pick which one I want. Just give it all to me, give it all to me. There is no way I can polish off this plate, but there is the perfect way to polish off the day. And that, my friends, is down the street because it's game night. This is Arlington Stadium, home of the Texas Rangers. And tonight they happen to be playing the good folks from down the street, the Houston Astros. It's a big street. And with a little time to kill before opening pitch, let's see how these Ranger fans do it up here. Go Rangers! I have to ask, at a, at a Texas Rangers tailgate, who invited these guys? <laughs> How did y'all get here? They're, they're part-time Rangers fans. They're part-time Rangers fans. When you're not playing the Astros, we're Rangers fans. Okay, all right. I understand. <laughs> I understand that. How long has it been since you missed a home game? Uh, 417 consecutive games. No way! S Wait. September 3rd, 2008 was the last game I missed. No way! Okay, so I followed my nose over to these dudes, and uh, what y'all got on the grill, man? Hey, man, we got some skirt steak and some sausage dogs and everything. We already got the stuffed peppers ready. Oh, man, those it's look awesome. That's how we do it right here, right? Oh, here, man. Tailgate. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Is uh, the tailgate critical part of going to see a Ranger critical game? Critical part every time. If, every we don't, every time. if we don't make it early enough to tailgate, we stay home. <laughs> yeah. Well, all I can say to that is... Go what a day. From the beginning, Arlington's been much more than just a suburb. It's DFW's playground for big entertainment and big thrills. And whether you get those by passing, tailgating, bowling, or simply eating, it's a tradition that still lives on. As you see, there's tons of reasons to come to Arlington, whether that's game day or any day. But I have one very important game I don't want to miss. I think I hear the Star Spangled Banner right now. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Now the museum takes you back to the history of Bolt 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 Bolt. So let's travel to the Emerald, the Iron, the Emerald, the Emerald. Tex Mex does got, does got, does got. You see how good this food is? It's not the margarita, it's the Tex Mex. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one sexy eater. It takes on its own 
<coughs> I just choked on something. All right, let me do that whole thing again. <laughs> I can't do it. For more information on all we see, do, and eat on The Day Tripper, visit us online at thedaytripper.com. I'll see you on the road. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at The Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condios, amigas.